Yeah! Where do I put this? <laughs> Should I just <laughs> stick it on my head or something? Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. My name is Miley. If you are new here, I do a new DIY video every single week. And this week, I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm a little bummed out. I was going to be starting my basement makeover this week, but some stuff came up that made me not really able to work on it right now. So, with that being said, this week I am going to be making some Halloween decor. I already tackled fall decor, but that was really cutesy and fun and pumpkins. This week, we're getting spooky wooky. I picked up a bunch of stuff from the thrift store that I am going to be making over into my Halloween decor. So let's get into it. So all the decor I made was to spookify my mantle for the Halloween season. And anytime I think of spooky stuff, I instantly think of the Victorian era and Gothic architecture. And I've always really liked Halloween decor that has more of an old creepy antique feel to it. So that is the vibe I went for with my Halloween decor. Okay, so the first two things that I got for my mantle were these two gold frames. The bigger one is down on the ground. I got this idea from my friend Hannah. She did this last year for a Halloween party that she threw and I thought it was so cool that I had to recreate it this year. All you're going to need for this DIY is Photoshop. And if you don't have Photoshop, you can always download it and use a seven day free trial to do this DIY. I picked out two wedding photos but you could use whatever photos you have. So I dragged the wedding photo into my workspace. I then am going to go up and make it black and white because I wanted to have a vintage feel to it. And then I went to Google and I just Googled any skull and found a skull image that I liked and imported that into my Photoshop. So I'm then going to drag that into my workspace. I'm going to come up here and pick the selector tool and I'm going to just select the skull. So we just have the skull selected. I'm going to right click, do layer via copy, and then delete that back layer so that we're just left with the skull. And then I'm going to make the skull black and white as well. We're then going to duplicate that layer so that there's two skulls. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna select the image of me and Jordan, and I am going to just select Jordan's hair <laughs> and then we are going to layer via copy and then I'm gonna do the same thing with my hair just my hair nope that's my face we don't want my face we just want my hair there we go okay so the hair around my face is selected and we're going to right click and do layer via copy boom I'm then gonna move the layer two and three which is our hair up to the top selecting one of the skulls i'm gonna shrink that down and bring that skull up to be over my face shrink that down and bring that up to be over jordan's face tilt that a bit try to line it up as best we can so that it looks realistic so now we have some spooky wooky wedding photos and I already went ahead and made a second one right here. So I made these actually last night and already went ahead, sent these to my local Walgreens and got them printed. Boom! So I'm gonna quickly pop these in the frame and show you guys the final DIY.
The next thing that I got from the thrift store was this set of jars. And once I saw them, I knew that these would be perfect to turn into a set of potion bottles. And I have also seen very similar bottles that come with corks at the dollar store. And I had this pack of labels sitting around from a previous project or something, and I thought they had the perfect look for these potion labels. The hardest part of this DIY was simply just coming up with the names on the jars. I went with Snake Venom, Love Potion, and Unicorn Tears. I thought these were fitting names for the stuff I got to put in the jars to be the potions. At the dollar store, I saw these skulls that were filled with goo, and there was exactly three different colors, so it was perfect. And for being three and up, they definitely did not make this very easy to get into, but after struggling to get this first one open, I pulled out all the goo and started to plop some into the jar. Well, I tried to at least. <laughs> oh my gosh. I should have gotten just one to play with. After successfully getting all of the goo into the jars, I brought in my trusty hot glue gun to add a cork to each bottle. I do love a hot glue moment until I burn the crap out of my finger. Mmm, yep, that happened. Ow. <laughs> Ow. But now thinking about it, I know why I burned my finger. I didn't sing the Don't Burn Your Finger Miley song. And that completes this super easy DIY. And finally, the last and my most favorite Halloween thing I have ever made. I picked up this, well, what I think is a utensil holder. I really like the height and shape of this thing and thought it would be perfect for this DIY. I had to start off with the very important step of scraping off the price tag. And then bringing in yet another skull and all of his skull friends. I picked up a bunch of these large skulls and a few packs of some small skulls at the dollar store. And then taking my X-Acto knife, I um, stabbed the side of this guy's head and uh, just started performing surgery. This part was a little hard at first and I really thought I was going to slice my finger right open, so I took this nice and slow to get the best and cleanest cut I could and also not slice my finger open. And after successfully performing a face transplant on this guy, I did the same thing with another one of his skull friends. And bringing in my hot glue gun again, I transplanted the skull face to the vase and added a bunch of hot glue to each skull so that they were really stuck on there. After both skulls were nice and stuck, I did the same thing to all of the packs of the small skulls that I got, and this was weirdly harder and easier than the big skulls. They weren't as thick, so it was a lot easier to cut through them, but since they were so small, I felt like I was going to cut my finger at any moment. And after many successful face removals from the tiny skulls, I repeated the process of hot gluing all of the skulls to the vase. Once the hot glue was all dry, I brought in some plaster. And taking that plaster, I began to work that in the gaps in between all of the skulls. And this is when the catacomb look I was going for with this vase really started to take shape. And I wanted to give this vase a lot of texture, so taking some extra plaster, I started scraping a little bit of extra plaster down the front of the larger skulls and adding plaster to the back where I didn't put any skulls. After a few hours, the plaster was finally dry and using some Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color almond, I spray painted the vase. I was going to add a bit more dimension back into the skulls, but I ended up really liking the way just the plain off-white looked, so I kept it plain. I finished up my mantle display with a few quick things. I added some hot glue to this vase and then spray painted it black. 
I also got these vases from the thrift store to use as candle holders and added one last addition from the dollar store that I spray painted using the same off-white spray paint. Okay, I know I said I was bummed I couldn't start my basement this week, but I am not bummed anymore. This spooktacular mantle display is giving me some life. I think all of these DIYs really gave me that old creepy antique vibe I was going for. I hope you liked this video guys, and as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys!